2, 24, 2014. These are the latest images of Comet Linear, guys, as it dies down. You've got Mars in the small dot there, Venus coming in. That's just the perspective of the camera. Uh, Venus is very close to the size of the Earth. Mars is about half that size, but again, you've got uh, camera differences. Let's look at uh, the, this linear grouping here. That's what I want to call it because this is what it looks like on radar, and you've seen this before. Um, there's some new images. I want to show you that also. But, uh, guys, this is, uh, again, we calculated this debris field with the Earth moving 67,000 miles per hour, uh, 2.1 million miles, the section that we'll go through. Now, guys, these are, this is just a wide cloud image. There are individual objects inside this. Now, if you go back and uh, look at some of the uh, history of this, they noted that in this year, 18, that we would go through all the dust trails from 1803 to 1924. That's 120 years and about 25 passes of this uh, comet and this debris field. Said they suggested the shower might well be a storm. And they also added that North America would be best suited for this event. I've also seen <coughs> radars, uh, excuse me, images with Russia being part of that, but this is a 30 hour event. The entire Earth will be exposed to it. Now look at this image. That's the Earth and the gold dot. Now notice the little dots around it. And uh, the Earth will move in that direction across this path. You see that? Close up. The little dots. Radar imaging. You see the, uh, that's uh, asteroids, meteors, whatever you want to call them. They're part of the debris field. This black section of that tail that we're going to go through is very thick and dense. It's 260,000 miles wide. That's 32 times larger than the Earth. 32 Earths could fit across that section that we're going to go through on the 24th. That's the thickest part. This is a concentrated radar image. But again, these, this other debris out there, any of these objects are very deadly. Remember, 32 Earths could fit across the center of that dark black line. Now, May 23rd is now the date they're saying it will slide in front of Earth, the same day that we start entering its debris field. So there's not much of a delay there. You see that, guys? May 23rd, it slides through the Earth's orbit right in front of us. We start entering the debris field. May 23rd peaks on the 24th. You know, let's switch cameras on Sechi. Again, if you, if you haven't watched these in a while, this may not appear large. It's very large. That's what we're looking at. Right there, guys. You see it? And it's moving fast, too. May 6, 2014. Notice our time stamp in the bottom right. What we're looking at is linear is above the Earth. Not that far above. N not anywhere near the range that we would not be affected by any solar activity that comes from the sun a solar flare a coronal mass ejection is linear it you see in the top right it started to glow that's telling us that it's becoming recharged it will have an effect it is negative charge the sun is positive charge it is an electrical arcing effect we saw it with every comet that's come in now this is unlike ice and not a sun diver its closest approach to the sun is started last night at midnight, goes through today. But through the next 30 days, it's close enough to Earth, as you notice here, May 24th, both timestamps. That's the center of the, de of the debris field. Also, we are still going to be in this line of fire from any solar activity, so we've got to watch both things. But I went all the way through May into June. It's still going to be close enough into June to where if it stays intact, which is another possibility, remember Holmes is at its close approach started to disintegrate. We're going to have to watch it. Now we're passing through a meteor shower. Don't forget with space weather radio, if you're cloudy, you can come in here to listen. But go to the AMS and I will link it, the American Meteor Society. There's Dozens and dozens of fireball reports coming in, sometimes as many as 50 people seeing it, 50 different reports coming in. Each time they're saying 
It's larger than anything I've seen before, or it's coming straight down and exploding, or I heard it before I saw it. Those are amazing things, guys. These are not shooting stars. These are not meteorites. You see the thin flash, and they're gone. Imagine walking in the case in Canada, in Ontario. They were walking on the trail, and they heard this roar above them. Imagine that. They said it was quiet, they were isolated. And then you see this. The heavens are definitely changing, and through the next month, it's time to watch. I expect... And I hope I'm wrong that any day we'll see another Cherub Links uh, video from CNN or one of the major news stations about an exploding asteroid or meteor over the Earth, possibly an impact. But it's a heads up, guys. Be safe. May the 10th, 2014. This is the JPL from today for 209P Linear. Now, Notice it's outpacing Earth at this point as it, they're both coming around the sun in the same direction. And it's, it's still above us, but it's slightly ahead of us. And it will continue that until it crosses the ecliptic or the uh, path of the Earth's orbit on May the 23rd and dives in front of us. Now, we're not worried about the comet striking the Earth. We've been tracking the debris field that's associated with this pass and passes that go back, back into the 1800s. In other words, in the timing of the entire event for the last, well, thousands of years, actually, is the Earth is passing through all the debris fields that it's laid down in each pass every six years. Now, the central or the parent body is linear of all these debris fields, and that's where the actual comet is now, right above us. And this is the latest images. And I'll show you some close-ups, but the nucleus is very ragged on the inside, and that's telling me that it's multiple nuclei. Now, what needs to happen is it comes right on down through the 23rd. There passes. It needs to hold together. No more. We don't need a big solar flare. We don't need a lot of uh, pressure from the sun on this thing. It needs to keep that ball of shrapnel that it is intact and going through. We're going to have enough uh, things to watch with just the debris field, which NASA is calling a possible meteor storm. Now, these are the latest images of Comet Linear. The nucleus is very ragged. Look at this. It's hard to tell at this point how disintegrated it is, but I can definitely tell you that is not one solid uh, nuclei in the middle of this. So it needs to hold together again as it comes over Earth. It's in the stress point because of perihelium. It's not on the day of perihelium, but for the next week or two weeks, it's so close to the sun that it's feeling that stress as it starts to bend back and out into the uh, inner solar system. So it, you've got that possibility of putting strain on it. And again, a strong X flare, a strong coronal mass ejection. Do you remember what it did to I Sun on November 19th? We watched a solar flare strip that tail down from 260,000 kilometers to about 60,000. So it can have a powerful, powerful effect on one of these comets. So, and we got that possibility because of where all the sunspots are. But check out these again. Very ragged nucleus. Now, right here was the uh, 5.7, it's called. It was uh, 28 kilometers northwest uh, of Anchor Point, Alaska. Now, that's a dangerous area. We've had one there, the one yesterday, the 6 point in uh, Mexico. So that you kind of got that pressure point on both sides of the San Andreas down all the way through the Denali Fault from Alaska to Yellowstone. Just a time to watch. Nothing very powerful at this point is directly Earth-facing, but all, the perfect storm setup is there. We, you, guys, you just don't have comets come this close to the Earth and uh, with that kind of solar activity facing us. We always see a reaction. We always see a reaction from the sun to these comets. And we're in that line of fire. Keep your heads up. Be safe.